So I binged this entire series earlier this year, um, probably right before the summer. Uh, I don't think I ever got around to doing an entry for it, which brought, was brought to my attention when I've been kind of going through this sort of Netflix binging phase where I'm just watching tons of stuff that Netflix has, and I'm going to be doing entries about a lot of them. And essentially, I don't under, I don't remember why I missed doing an, an entry for this show, but I'm doing one now. And it's totally worth it because this show, oh, this show is so good. I love this show so much. I'm so mad that I got into it late, but I was able to watch it in its entirety, find appreciation for it, and also find that I'm very upset (laughs) with the fact that it's over. So... I guess I fall in line with a lot of people who kind of followed it throughout its years. It premiered in 2019. Um, It's a Netflix original, um, but I think it's a mostly Netflix UK, but you can get it in America. And of course, if anybody knows, it's created, directed, written by, and starring Ricky Gervais. Now, I watched this when I went on this Ricky Gervais kick, and I had watched a bunch of stuff by Ricky Gervais, and this just fell in line with that. And I just got hooked by the end of the first episode. It's just so powerful. It's such a great, well-written show that seeing that Ricky Gervais was able to have all the creative control just shows you how good he is at storytelling. Now, granted, he's a great comedian. He's gotten a lot of backlash from the shit he says at like the Oscars and the Emmy Awards and shit like that. But this is just on another level when it comes to what he is capable of. What he is capable of is tremendous storytelling. This is such, such good storytelling. And it's even it's even sucks that it's only six episodes a season. You know, it's six episodes a season. These range from about 25 to 30 minutes a piece. This is such a quick watch. I think we did this in less than a week, all three seasons, 18 episodes, you know, watching them like they were movies, you know, four or five episodes at a time. One, you could probably finish it in a whole day if you wanted to. It's such a great story. So the concept behind Afterlife is Ricky Gervais character, Tony, is this reporter for a local newspaper in a very small town um, in the... um, Somewhere in Britain. I don't remember what it's called. I think it's called Tanbury. So he's this local journalist. He is going through depression and he's feeling suicidal because his wife just passed away of cancer. Now, his wife is like his best friend. It continuously does these backtracking things of how his wife always wanted to record things. So there's all these cute little videos that he's continuously watching over and over again. And the only thing he has as his companion is this dog. And it's a dog that he had with his wife. And he's kind of left alone with just the dog and his thoughts. And he's constantly drinking and he's constantly depressed. And he just talks very cynical about the world. And a lot of the times there are scenes where there is comedy that's sort of his comedy that he's written to act out as part of the show. Like there's this really good one where he stopped by um, like a, uh, like an activist outside of like a supermarket or something. And they're trying to get him to like donate. And he's like, nah, I've already donated enough today. And he's like, well, I guess you don't love the children. And he's like, you know, fuck you. What do you mean? I don't love the children. Like this, this back and forth he has with the kid. And then he walks about 10 feet, finds like this homeless dude and then he yells to the kid, he's like, like, oi, look over here. And the kid looks at him and he puts 10 bucks in the homeless guy's cup and he gives him the finger and he just walks away. And that's like a pure Ricky Gervais joke that he's definitely done on stage at some point in time. So he writes his comedy into this. It's very dark humor, but it's very much this like also tell of what like everyday life sort of is through his perspective because he's written everything. And there's just very powerful moments. There's very, there's moments that just get you, especially if you're a person who just sort of understands what it's like to go through really big bouts of depression and to kind of fight through those things. You know, you find appreciation for the idea that this person 
was able to capture that essence. And Ricky Gervais is that person. He's the person who has captured that essence and has really portrayed it very well. He's a man who really doesn't like acting. Like, for the, for, for the fact that he did, like, The Office and how hard that was for him because he loves to laugh and he loves it when things are funny. And for a man who does, like, all of these movies, I don't think he's a big fan of acting. But when he does it and he has, I guess, control over it, it's tremendous. You know, it's tremendous. Because, again, he wrote, directed, created, and starred in this film, in this series. He's done a bunch of films, and I don't know if he's been the writer and director or creator of all of them, but I'm pretty certain he's done that for most of them. Maybe one or two of them, at least. Like, he's done a couple of films that he's the star of, not even just, like, playing a secondary character for, but he's actually starred in. I think he's done a dozen films. I want to say at least three or four of them. He's been the actual writer and director for those as well as starred in it. Like one right off the top of my head is the invention of lying. And the invention of lying is this tremendously long joke about like the 10 commandments and how they came about through his perspective. It's, it's a really, really good story. And there's another one called Ghost Town that he did a couple of years ago that I wanted to do an entry about. That's not him. I don't think he wrote or directed that. But it is one of the few that he's chosen as being like, yeah, I'm going to do this film. Uh, He's done way more TV than he's done anything else. And I think it's because, you know, he doesn't, unless it's his show, like Afterlife, he just does guest roles. Like he does these little, these, these little bitty things, you know, unless it was The Office, which he did The Office for, you know, two years the British office was on for the office UK that was two years and that was at the beginning of his career when he was still trying to like make a name for himself you know maybe I'm misunderstood maybe I'm misinterpreting this but I don't think Ray Gervais is the type that really does like comedy or acting and that's maybe just me going off of how he kind of talks to them at award shows (laughs) but when he does it he's great you know like this this entire show just shows how great of an actor he is when he applies himself. And I think he applies himself more when he knows the story and when he created the story. And he just, he just knocks us out of the park. Every episode of every season for the 18 streak episode that this is, is just banger after banger, hit after hit. It's just fantastic. I was so mad when it was over and I was looking it up and the way it ends is that it does end on a note that I'm guessing he wanted, and there isn't going to be anything more after this, though a lot of people want more. He's gone on record saying that he's done with this show. He wanted, he wrote it for the, for the time frame he wanted to write it for, and he loves the ending he gave it, and he doesn't want to do it again. So this show is officially over. It is on Netflix. You can find it now. Find it. Watch it. And just bask in the glory that is that amazing show. Even if you're not a Ricky Gervais fan, just watch it for how gripping the story is. It, it just, it grabs you within the first episode and you can't stop watching. Such a, such a tremendous show. What are the ratings for this show? Hold on. I have to know what the critical response is for this show. Uh. Rotten Tomatoes has it at 73%, 77% for the second season. Third season, Rotten Tomatoes has it at 58. That's a little depressing. I don't believe that that's accurate. Shouldn't be that accurate, but what do I know, right? What else do we got? Metacritic. Metacritic has it at 50 out of 100 for season one, 62 out of 100 for season two, And where's the Metacritic one for down here? Season 3, 44 out of 100. So a lot of people feel that I guess season 3 kind of fell off. That's probably because, like, the first two seasons are back-to-back. It's um, 2019-2020, and then he doesn't have the next one until 2022. So he was probably filming it in the middle of the pandemic and trying to make it work. So it probably lost a little bit. But to me, I still think it worked. That's probably why a lot of people think the, th- the last season fell off. But to me, it didn't. I really did appreciate what the last season um, gave for how it ended. And maybe it's just poorly rated because a lot of people didn't want it to end and feel like it didn't end on a note that satisfied them. But that's the point, is that not every ending is going to satisfy you. And I don't think Ricky Gervais cares if it satisfies you. He found his ending, and he's going to make that what it is for his story. 
again, the writer and creator of this art is going to tell the story the way he wants to tell it. And Ricky Gervais told this tremendously well. And if that's how he chose to end it, I give him the respect and I show him that that I appreciate. I love that ending. I love that show. And you should totally try it out if you've never even heard of it. It's it's just it's hard to really grasp the words of appreciation I have for it as a person who kind of feels that he could feel for the character and understand where they're coming from. I'm not trying to sound like some cliche person that thinks they couldn't relate to the character in a movie or the character in a show. I usually don't. I'm probably going to say that a bunch of times too. I probably have said it before already, but I usually don't. And when I do to me, that matters. And I do for this show. So for me, this show matters.